Hey kids, welcome to a lesson 16, functions with return values. Writing functions that return values. Now you're going to write your own function returns a value, maxval. This function should return the maximum of two values provided as input. The code for minval is provided so that you can replicate the pattern used for this function. I think that's a pretty big hint right there, kids. Pattern for functions that return values. Use the parameter to provide input. Declare a variable that will be used as output, possibly initializing its value. Update the value in your output variable throughout your program. Return your output variable on the last line of your function. That looks like the steps we should use. You may actually recognize many similarities between how we wrote functions that process arrays and functions that return values. These patterns aren't rules of programming, but they help you make your code easy to read and understand. We have a do this. Starter code has been provided, which stubs out maxval and generates two random values. Minval is still provided so that you can replicate the pattern used. Write maxval, replicating the pattern used to write minval. Use maxval within the console.log statement as if it were a number to generate the output similar to the one shown below. Looks like our example here says the maximum of 8 and 94 is 94. 2 and 29, 29. Let's go ahead and take a look at our code here. We have a comment saying add a call to minval in the console.log command below. Our console.log statement looks a lot like the one from the previous lesson. The maximum of rand1 and rand2 is, I think we're probably going to add something pretty close to maxval and then rand1, rand2. We have a spot for our function maxval. And here's our function minval from the last lesson. What happens here? Well, our function has two parameters, and we have a variable, which is the minimum number. If number one is less than number two, min, our variable, is going to become number one. Otherwise, the minimum is going to be number two. Then we're going to return min. I have to replicate this up here. I believe it's going to look almost identical to this, except we're going to switch this from less than to greater than. Let's see if I'm right. We have to create a variable here, and this one is going to be called max. Don't forget your semicolon. We have to put our if statement in, and in this one, if num1 is greater than num2, Two, we need a little curly Q. Then min equal num1, semicolon. That's our if part. We have to do our else part. So we have else. We're going to need a, another little curly Q. And else min or max, and this should be max on both of these, is going to equal num2. After that, we need to return it. We're going to have one curly Q. So in between the last two, we're going to do return. And what are we going to return? We're going to return max. That is our function. While it is written, it is not called yet. So we have to call it. And a lot like the other lesson, we're going to add it here to our console.log statement. Right after is, we're going to do a plus. We're going to use our max val function. And what is it going to pull between? Rand1, Rand2. Should have two parentheses at the end and a semicolon, which we do. When I run now, Rand1 will be a random number between 1 and 100. Rand2 will be a random number between 1 and 100. It should tell me the maximum of the two numbers. 
Let's see if my hypothesis is correct. Run. The maximum of 45 and 20 is 45. That one is right. 60 and 47 is 60. 63 and 34 is 63. Looks like our code is working as it should. Looking back up here to our do this, we look through the starter code and work through it. We wrote a max value function similar to the min val, and then we called that max val in our console.log statement using the return command. Pretty interesting. I think that's all code.org wants from us. Let's see if they want anything else from this lesson. Nope. Good job, kids. I will see you on the next one.